Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. I'm KY4, BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. And I just wanted to review some of the work that we were doing up at the abandoned repeater site the other day. So I wanted to show KK4YUG and his chainsaw a little bit here. We cut down a number of trees on uh, the workday in the second video, just so we could start opening up the area a little bit. But even the, with the amount of trees that we removed, it's not enough for the new power line, the power pole and the line that they're going to run by the power company. So the power company came in with their crew and they started cutting down more trees and branches for the new power pole and the line that they're going to run to the repeater site. And uh, so what I'm showing you here is some of the work that they've done. Now they're more than happy to cut down some of these branches and trees, but they don't do anything once they're felled. So we need another work day to get in there and start removing some of this. This is actually looking at the, the from the road, looking back towards the repeater. So we can get an idea of the, the, the line that they're going to run. And you can see some of the branches and trees they've already cut down on this side as well. This is, again, looking south, um, south by southwest, back towards the repeater site. And you can see it's already opening up. You can see some clouds there in the background. Um, they also cut down some branches uh, on the other side of this, which I'll show you in the next uh, uh, picture. So you can see the existing pole. And they're going to run a brand new line to a brand new power pole. So you can see a pole in the distance. That's the old power pole, but it's not in the best of condition. And the actual uh, power termination on that pole is not up to code. So they're going to install a brand new pole for us. Uh, and that's going to be nice because we're going to have a, a proper meter there with a proper electrical box. I think it's going to supply up to 200 amps, which we don't need all that. And uh, we'll be good to go. Now, this is looking back the other way. So you can see that opening and the um, uh, field just beyond uh, and the trees that have been cut down to create this gap. I would think with the amount of light that's getting into the site now based on the trees we cut down and the trees that they, they cut down, that the area is going to dry out a little bit. It really stayed pretty damp and moist uh, underneath a lot of these trees. Uh, Appalachia or Eastern Kentucky is almost like a rainforest in some areas, and it doesn't dry out very quickly. This red stake, I believe, is where the new power pole is going to go. Now, we still have some junk <laughs> that we need to move. The site does have quite a bit of trash, but just another work day. We'll, we'll start moving a lot of this out and over where the owner wants it for disposal. And that's where our new power pole is going to go. And uh, to the right of that is where the new shed is going to go. So let's introduce the new shed. Yes, we had a new shed delivered uh, to worldwide headquarters. And uh, folks, I can't tell you how hard this was, uh, finding a, a shed that's going to work for amateur radio uh, util uh, utilization. Keep in mind, you can buy sheds from the big box stores. You can buy sheds on the side of the road, but they are not insulated and they're incredibly expensive. You wouldn't look at a shed like that and think, well, you're going to spend two or three thousand dollars. But at least in my area, that's what they run. And part of that is because they've tried to finance them and all that. This shed is an insulated shed. It is made out of metal, uh, but two layers of metal uh, outside and inside with insulation in between. And this is going to allow us to keep the inside cool in the summer and warm or warm enough in the winter. And typical sheds that you can buy would be much more difficult to do without a lot of upgrades of, of doing it, that on your own. These insulated sheds are all ready to go for this, uh, for this kind of uh, purpose. We also had them put in a nice little uh, opening there for the air conditioner. Now, as you can see here, they're unloading it from the come-along uh, bed there on the truck. These guys know exactly what they're doing. Uh, they'll, they'll tilt it up. Uh, they've removed the straps on it already. They'll start to slide it off the bed, put it on a couple of concrete pads. And as you can see, then they just drive out from underneath it and uh, off, you, off they go. And then just insert the concrete pads uh, both on the front and on the back. It's really cool. 
how they go about the delivery. And you can see the other one is just still hanging up there in the air because it's still strapped down. They were delivering that a little bit later in the afternoon. They probably took 40 minutes, 45 minutes to deliver this, get it balanced and uh, or get it uh, leveled and so forth. Uh, so not very long at all. But back to the shed itself, it has insulation in the roof, insulation in the walls, uh, nice floor. Uh, and of course we had them put the opening in. We also had them replace the hinges on the door. You can see the two doors here. Uh, you can't really see the hinges great, but the pins were replaced. No, the original pins in the uh, hinges, since they're uh, outside facing, you could have just tapped out with a screwdriver and a hammer. The pins that they put in there are actually manufactured so you can't tap them out, at least not easily. So that adds additional security. We'll also add some additional security to the door that we're not going to open as often so that it'd be much harder to kick it in. Here you can see our uh, fella inserting some additional boards for leveling. He's got a level on the inside of the uh, shed for both front to back leveling and left to right leveling. And all he has to do is insert uh, uh, pieces of wood uh, to get it as level as needed. This is a temporary location. It's not going to live here, but we need it to be level for the uh, work that we're going to do. Still a lot to do with it. We've got to install the AC, which is coming up. We've got to install electrical, which will be in the next part in the series. And we still have to install some of the uh, shelving and possibly some equipment as well. So here we're finishing up on the leveling side, getting the blocks underneath and then we'll uh, lower it down and uh, make sure it's level front to back. Now I had the uh, manufacturer go ahead and put an opening in for us. When I looked at the shed originally, it was just the shed with no openings. Pretty, pretty tight, uh, airtight, to be quite honest. Uh, but we knew we needed an air conditioning opening, so I asked. I said, can you put in an air conditioning opening? He says, yeah, no problem. Just give us the dimensions that you need. We'll build the opening for you. And sure enough, no worries there. They went ahead and put in an opening for us and flashed the sides off so that it looked really nice and neat. AC4DM, as is typical, uh, just had an air conditioner laying around. Uh, it's amazing how we never have to go to a box store to, guard, to get hardly anything. He's already got it somewhere, squirreled away. He had a working air conditioner just sitting in one of his temporary sheds, or they're not so temporary on his site. But anyway, air conditioner is ready to go. So we have an AC. We had already measured it so that the opening in the shed would be perfect. And we just need to lift it and get it into the opening to start doing some roughing. And sure enough, fit right in, no problem. Now, these AC units are typically for small apartments, things like that. They have those uh, uh, extenders so that you can fill in your window opening because these typically sit in a window. All we have is a bare uh, rectangle. So it's not quite a window and it doesn't quite sit in there as um, easily as it should. So we need to make some alterations some modifications to the installation of the AC on the sides, the top, and in the back as well. So we started finding some metal uh, sh uh, sheets uh, uh, that already had a 90 degree where we can affix part of it to the air conditioner and part of it to the building so that it can't be just pushed in easily. Uh, and we're going to put this on the left and the right side, the top and the bottom on the inside and the outside so that the air conditioner will be going nowhere once we have these, uh, these pieces installed. So in our next picture, we'll show some of that fabrication uh, and uh, installation. So here we're just fitting. And now as we zoom out, you can see some of the screws that we've already started to put in. This is going into the shed, the ones that you can see. Plus, we have three screws going into the air conditioner itself. So again, once all of these pieces were installed, the air conditioner was going nowhere. It's going to be nice and tight in there. And we've got the holes covered and insulated as well. Uh, so that we're not losing uh, uh, air conditioning and or heat in the winter. Not quite done that day. We also needed to create a, a rain deflector for the outside. So uh, we got out the old bendy tool and uh, some aluminum stock that AC4DM just had laying around. And uh, my brother, uh, KY4CKP, and he, uh, AC4DM, got to work. And we installed that on the back side of the shed. We also did some caulking on some of the gaps uh, in the metal forming on the outside to make sure wasps and bugs couldn't get in and to provide a more airtight seal. And the last thing we wanted to do is paint that floor with a non-skid surface. So you can buy that porch sealer just about anywhere at your big box stores. And we put down two coats of elephant gray. Folks, I can't wait for part four. We're going to start installing the electrical 
so that we can uh, run all the repeaters and so forth that we have in mind for this shack. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned for the next part in the series in 73s.